Okay, we're going to set the Anilam machine up for, um, for a startup. The air, the air is already turned on. As soon as all this gets through, make sure there's not a disc in there. All right, just press F10. Then it's only one thing to hit, so that's F5, select. And we need to turn the servo on. We can do it either here, or we can do it right here, over travel reset. That turns your servo motor on. And now on the screen, it tells you to machine home is required. We hit home. If it does not move, like it's not moving now, that means that your feed rate is turned all the way down. So if we turn our feed rate all the way up, it's going to home itself as quickly as possible. This will be the machine home versus what we will call later as a part home, bottom left corner of our part. All right, with that done, on this screen, if we hit B and hit Enter, it gives us a better looking screen. Now we have the machine home, we have our program home, there's a target that lets us know where we're headed in our X, Y, or Z axis and it gives us a distance to go. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to hand wheel and I'm going to set it for X axis and I want to go turn in a negative direction which is making our part go this direction. And let me get up in there. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my part set it on the parallels so and I've already cleaned that. And then if I take a scale or a parallel or something and butt it up against this vise, I can use this as a machine stop. That way the next time I run apart, all of my X0 home positions will be in that one corner. Okay, with my hand wheel, I'm going to come down in my Z axis this is as fast as I can travel per click is 10 thousandths. Now if I move on my Y axis, and then my X. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down on the part, and I'm going to use a piece of paper to touch off so that I know the height of that tool. Bring us a little closer in and slow it, slow it down. So I wiggle the paper back and forth until we make a little bit of contact. I will be within a couple thousandths of that surface. Now, if we go to F9, it's our tool. That happens to be tool number one, and it's a center drill, and we're calling that a sixteenth of an inch point. And I need to calibrate the length of that, so by arrow over down here under F8 it says calibrate Z now it just measured the length of that part length of that tool rather let's pick our tool back up now what we're looking for is bottom left corner I want to get my tool in this area because that's where we're going to be doing our measuring from if I go to my X axis Normally, if something really precision, you would want to set up uh -oh, an edge finder up. But right now, we're just going to use my smallest wall and adjust the bottom left wall. There, that looks pretty good right there. So now we need to go back to F9, where our tools are. Now, under offsets, I mesh offsets. The very first line of code that we come, we always use has a G53 in it, and that's a fixture offset. So now, if I calibrate my X and I calibrate my Y, I've already adjusted my Z, so I don't need to mess with the Z axis. I can hit exit. Now it knows that we're measuring from this corner. So that's pretty much it as far as setting the machine up. You need to make sure that your air pressure is turned up first, and um, that's pretty much it.